everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you uh, the beginning stages of a pinata. And let me tell you, these pinatas that I make are very thick. So, uh, unlike the puny little store-bought pinatas that only four kids get to hit, uh, these pinatas have been known to have to be sawed to get open. So, if you've got 10, 20 kids, don't worry about not all of them getting to hit this pinata because they're all going to get to hit it probably at least three times. Okay, so to do my pinatas, what I do is I buy a pack of punch balls. I got these from the dollar store. And I get just some cheap old school glue. I've got some flour and some salt and scissors. A spoon to stir your uh, paste with uh, just old um, newspaper. That's all. And then I've got a bowl with a lid and a bowl without a lid. That's to set my pinata on while I work on it. Now the reason I've got a bowl with a lid is because whenever I make my paste, I put it in the refrigerator. Now even though you're not going to be eating this, you really don't need to refrigerate it or anything. But I have noticed that if I leave it sitting out on the cabinet, then it's going to sour and it's going to stink. So I put it in the refrigerator and that keeps that smell at bay. Um, but also whenever you put it in the refrigerator, then it's going to be really cold when you get it out to work with it. So all I do is I pop it in the microwave for a minute or so just to warm it up. Now to make our paste, what we're going to do is just mix together this flour, salt, and glue. And you don't really have to measure. Just get you a pretty good pile of flour. And then your salt, I just measure it um, by palmfuls is all I do. Okay, I'm not going to be able to get that open. Let's see if this will work. So, palmfuls, for this batch, I'm probably going to go with about three. And then I'm going to put almost this whole bottle of glue in here. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some water in it. A fairly good amount of water and then just stir it up. You want it to be about like pancake batter, I want to say, maybe a little thinner. So you're just going to add water. Stir it up, add water, stir it up until you get to the right consistency. Oh, just about like pancake batter. Now, after you leave this set overnight and the flour absorbs some of that moisture, then you may have to put a little bit of water in it, you know, tomorrow because it might be a little thick. And sometimes it gets really clumpy. And if that happens, just get you a whisk or something and just get out some of those lumps. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to blow up 
our punch ball. And I leave this thing on there for now. So just uh, blow this up to whatever size that you want your pinata. Okay, so I've got our punch ball blew up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the newspaper into about one and a half to two inch strips. Now, some people will tell you just to wet down the whole thing and put it on there, but I have noticed that it is easier to work with and it makes for a stronger pinata if you cut it into strips. And it doesn't have to be all nice and neat by no means. Just cut it up. Now here at the ends where the paper is folded, I just cut a thin strip off of there so I don't have one twice the size of what it should be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got the newspaper all cut up. I just pile it up into a pile. And then it's ready to put onto your pinata. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. Just be very careful not to pop your balloon. Okay, so to do this part, I just dip it in there. I keep one hand up and I just run it through the paste like this. And then I run down with my fingers. And there I've got a nice wet piece to put on my pinata. And I always start up at the top and just lay one on and smooth it down. This gets a little bit tricky. You've got to hold your ball or your balloon and it, it gets much easier as you go because of the, the weight of all the paper. You know, what you're going to do is you're going to put a whole half on here. You're going to cover half of this pinata at a time and just sort of overlap them, lay them on, smooth them down. Run your hand all along it and make sure it's smooth. And just keep on doing this until you've got all of this side covered about down to there and this side by about down to there. Okay, so I've got the first starting of the layer on the pinata. This is about as far as you want to go with it at first. And now I'm going to set this in front of a fan so it can dry. And then I will turn it over and continue covering the balloon just like this. Okay, everyone. I've got the first layer of the pinata on. And you might notice that my balloon is a different color because the cat got up there and busted the balloon. So I had to start all over again. But it's all good now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over like this. Okay, I've got my paste and I've warmed it up a little bit and I've stirred it up. And now I'm just going to continue what I was doing the other day. Just wet down my strip of paper, run down it with my fingers to get all the excess off, and put it on the pinata and just smooth it down. Now right here where it's sticking up, you might dip your fingers in your paste and just run your fingers across that until it sticks down at the end. 
sometimes that can be a little bit time consuming to get it to stick. And of course this is all very messy. So just overlap them just a little bit. I'll show that to you better on the other side here in just a second. Smooth it all down. Another piece. Just run it through the paste like that. And don't worry about this top side that's not covered because whenever you run your fingers across it, after you get it up here, then it will it'll get wet too. Now, I'll show you what I mean about overlapping. Just bring it a little bit above where the other one stops. Just like that. It's kind of hard for me to do it being on the other side like that. And if you get little creases in it, it's not the end of the world right now. And just smooth it down. Try to get your ends to stick. Now the reason I say that little creases ain't going to hurt you right now is because all this is going to be covered up by several, several layers, and you're not going to be able to see it. Now, when you get closer to the end, yeah, you're going to want everything to try to lay as smooth as possible so your finished product is smooth. And just keep on doing this all the way as far down as you can go, and then next time you'll turn the balloon sideways like this and lay more to cover up your balloon completely. But don't pop your balloon until you get several layers on it. Okay, so I did actually get all of my balloon covered up on the sides here. You can tell that there's just this little spot here and there's gonna be one on the bottom that is open. But next time when we get this dry, we're going to set it in front of a fan, and when we get it dry, then next time when we come back in with our paper, the next layer, we're going to be going crossways of these that's going this way. Next time we're going to go this way, and it'll go ahead and cover up the rest of that balloon. So set this in front of a fan and let it dry for several hours, and then uh, start your next layer on it. Okay, so we have covered up the pinata up here at the top and we've set it in front of a fan and let it dry. Now we're going to turn it over and you can see there's still some balloon showing right here. So where before we was we had all of our papers going this way, this time we're going to put them this way. And we're just going to put another layer on here in the opposite direction that makes your pinata stronger. And we're going to keep covering up the balloon. Once we get the balloon covered and we get a few more layers on it where it's a little bit hard, then we will bust our balloon and we will that will leave holes here and on the other side where the other part of the balloon is sticking out. Once we get the balloon popped, then we will put layers over that to cover up those holes. And then once we get enough layers on it, we'll put a hanger on it and then we'll paper mache over them so you can't see them. But just keep on going just like this and do one half of a layer. I do a half a layer at a time.
Okay, so I thought I would show you exactly what's going on now. I'm coming to the end of this second uh, layer. And I've come about halfway down the balloon. I'm just going to lay this one directly over that. Just overlap it maybe a quarter of an inch and wrap it around on both sides and then just smooth it out with your hand all the way around to the end of your piece of paper. Now, from here on out, I'm just going to be putting layers on there. I'm going to be crisscrossing them each time and I'm going to put probably about five to six more layers on this and then we'll come back and we'll pop the balloon okay everyone so I have done five layers on this pinata and it's getting pretty solid so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut this balloon out of here so just take your scissors and the top part of the balloon here where the tie is and just cut it <laughs> That's got to be my favorite part. Um, so the balloon's going to fall down in there, and that's just that's just got to be. It, it'll be all right. Um, now what we're going to do is we've got this hole in the top and a hole in the bottom. So we're going to paper mache over the holes. And let's get us around here to where we need to be because we're crisscrossing every layer a different way and these are going this way so we're going to paper mache this way now i've already got my paste out and stirred it up so we're just going to our first one we're going to lay over that hole just like that and it's going to not lay real flat for you for a little while but that's okay it'll it'll work out all in the end and I always make sure that my first one sticks down really good just smooth it down as best you can and roll on with it it'll all work out in the end now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put probably another five layers on crisscrossing every time of course and then we'll put our hanger on it Hi everybody, we're back and we have done five more layers on the pinata and now it is time to put the hanger on it. Now what I've got is just some rope from Walmart and I have measured these to about one and a half bodies length each and I've got three of them. So what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to take my pinata off the base you hold that there we go and I'm going to put the two ends of these together ends together and find the center and when I get the center I'm going to pull it put it into the bowl and just let it drape over the sides I'm going to go three different directions here so there's this one, get another one, ends together, find the center, put it in the bowl, and let them drape over the side like that, 
And then I'm going to put one more on it just for extra measure because this is getting to be a pretty heavy pinata. So put him in the bowl right about there and just let the ends fall out to the side like this. Now, get it all there. And now I'm going to set the pinata back on the base like this. And then I'm going to get the strings, just a minute. So I've got the one back here, and now I'm going to find the one up here, pull them up, pull them up to the center, and then just pull them, make sure they're snug against the bottom, and I'm just going to tie them here. I'm going to try to get it pretty tight. Put your finger right there. Hold it tight. Okay. Hold it tight. Don't let it move. And I'm just going to tie it in a double knot. Okay, maybe trigger. Just like that. And now I'll go on to the, ed the other edge, other side. Pull it up so it's tied on the bottom. Just a minute. Just a minute. And then tie this one right there. Put your finger right there tight. Okay, we're in the shot mode. All right, and that one, and then get your other one, pull it, try to make sure there's enough room between them, and we're just going to tie this one right there, tight, tight, just be letting it slip. Okay, move your finger. And there we go. Now I'm going to take all of these ends right here. Is that all of them? Yeah. And I'm going to bring them up and just tie a normal little knot. Mm -hmm. Like this. Pull it tight. This is what we're going to hang our pinata from. There it is. Now. All we're going to do is we're going to paper mache around these. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure they are evenly spaced if I can get them that way. They are going to move around on you a little bit until you get the first layer on. That's okay. Move. Mama, okay, now we're just going to paper mache over this. The same as we've been doing, I'm going to put another five layers on it. Okay, so I just wanted to show you real quick what this is going to look like with the first layer going on over your hanging ropes. Now, you can see it doesn't look like a whole lot right now. And right here you've got a lot of ropes showing. That's okay as we crisscross on the next layer that's going to close all up for us. And you can also see the ribs here where the, where the ropes are. That's okay. Those will work out as we put more layers on as well. So we're gonna keep on doing this, crisscrossing each time as usual for another five layers. Okay, everybody, I have put another five layers on the pinata. It's got 15 layers so far. And you can see everything's covered up nicely. And now we are gonna start putting the wings on, on the pinata. This is gonna be a one of those round fighters from Star Wars and I have measured from my hanger here 10 inches down and put a mark and I've done that on both sides there and there now we can tweak this however we need to to look at it and see where they're going to be straight so, like, you can see this mark is a little bit too far over, but I can bring it over into here, and it'll be just fine. So, to start my wings, what I've done is I've got toilet paper rolls, and I've cut them to two inches long. I've got four of them here, and I'm going to cut one, just cut it to where you can open it up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it to littler and stick it inside this one. 
that's going to make it stronger for me. I'm going to do that for both sides. Like this. That just makes my little piece there stronger. And then I'm going to hot glue them to where I need them. So I'm going to start over on this side and I'm going to hot glue them into place. And I hope that's going to be strong enough. Now, of course, when you're hitting the pinata, these are going to come off first thing. But that's okay. There we go. Just hold that for a few minutes so it will stay in place. Sometimes it takes a little while for it to actually dry a little bit. And then we're going to go around to the other side. I might put some just on the edge here around. Just for an extra added little bit. And my, my cord ain't long enough. But I couldn't find an extension cord, so, you know, what can you do? There we go. I hate all these little strings that you get when you're hot gluing. Okay, I need to get another glue stick and put in here. Maybe not just yet. Okay, now I'm going to see where I need to be on the other side. And my mark is right about here and I want my other piece to be right about there, which it's not going to set right right there. So I'm going to have to it's going to have to be off center it looks like. I think that'll be good right there. So I know this is away from the camera and you can't see it, but I will move it back in just a minute. Okay, so I said we was going to put it right about here, and if it's not perfect, it, you know, it's going to be okay, because, you know, it's, it's homemade, it's not supposed to be exactly perfect. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm going to glue around the outside here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this set up for a few minutes, and then I'm going to start with my paper mache again, um, and I've made some strips that are quite a bit wider than what I usually use, so I can put them, uh, whenever I get them wet, I can drape them like this 
and it will cover up this seam right here. But I want to make sure that that is nice and dry before I start that. So I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes and then we will start putting on our, our next layer over this. I'm probably going to do about another four, maybe five layers and then um, the pinata will be done and we will go ahead and put the big wings out here. Okay, so this one is all is all dry now. I think it will be just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my my wider strips, dip it in my paper mache paste, and it's a little bit lumpy on me right now. I just made it this morning. And then I'm going to put this on like this. And I'm just going to try to get it to smooth out as best I can up and over this, like that. And just smooth it out. Now if you get these, just fit this around this tube as best you can. Just try to make it as smooth as possible. And then I'm going to go at it from the underside down through here. We're just incorporating this tube into our piece. Like I said, just smooth it out as best you can around this tube and on out. Since these are wider, they don't like to lay as flat. That's why I do a more narrow strip for the whole pinata because I find that these, these wider ones don't like to lay as well. Now that I got the two on going horizontal, I'm going to put another one on each side vertically. And this may be too long. If you find that it's too long, just rip you some off. And roll on with it. I'm going to bend this up and over like that. And see, it's too long right here. It's going to hit the hanger. So just rip you some off. At this point, it doesn't have to look perfect because all this is going to be covered up. No one's going to be able to see the big jumble mess right here as long as you can keep it fairly uh, smooth. Okay. Now I know that one is going to be way too long, so I'm going to go ahead and rip it off now. And I'll put this one on here. Uh, this paste, I'm going to have to work with it a little bit. It's just not the right consistency for me. Now we're going to just set that just like that. Take it up to the top and come down here and bend it up onto your cylinder as best you can. This one's going to be contrary. 
There we go. And then you just got to work to smooth him out. Just like that. And now this is all I'm going to do to this side for right now until it dries a little bit. Because it's really hard to work with wet. If you keep on working with it like this, then it's just all going to slide off and be a puddle of goo, basically. So, work in layers and just do what you can do that day and let it dry. Of course, I'm going to set mine in front of a fan so it dries a lot faster. There. And now you do the same thing to the other side. Do the exact same thing over here. Okay, so I have allowed my pieces here going around my tubes to dry. And now I'm going to continue with the pinata. So let's see where these are going this way. So I'm going to want to go this way now. And we're just going to keep crisscrossing each round or each layer. For the next probably four or five layers and but when we come to the tubes we're just going to sort of incorporate them in i will probably yeah i know definitely we're going to run one around the tube so let's move that so you can see see how the tube is it's hitting the tube here i'm just going to try to form it around that tube as I work around. If it gets some crinkles in it, that's okay. Perfectly all right. Just work them around the tubes and over the tubes as well as you can get it. Let me get this part back here real quick. This other tube is back here. So that sort of gives you a general idea of what we're going to be doing. And once I get this whole layer on, then I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to just run a small, short one around, around the tube itself. See how this one's not wanting to really lay good? So I'm just going to crump. Crumple him around there as best I can. Oh, stuck together. Lay him like that. And there we go. Just like that. And I did make my paper mache just a little bit thicker for this part. Now, let me go over to this other side here. You can see this one is not laying, well, it's not covering it real well. But it'll all work itself out. As you work around the pinata, it'll all work out. Let's get another one on here. Just so I can show you what is going on. See, as I went to the other side, now we're going to start covering up this tube. We'll just put it right like that, where he, it lays right on there. Scrunch it up to where it lays all the way around. And then do your back one over here the same way. Just like that. And I'll show you what I mean about going around the tube. Like 
Now, obviously, you probably won't want to go around the tube until you actually get all these laid up on there. But I'm going to show you what I'm meaning real quick about around the tube. We're going to take one of our... Um, let me get a towel. We're going to take one of our strips and we're going to make it where it's going to go just around the tube. So we're going to rip it probably right there, make a piece, dip it in our paper mache, and we're just going to lay it around the tube like this. Now obviously we don't want to do that a whole lot because it'll make our tube really thick and it's not going to look exactly right. And there you have it. It'll look like this and then whenever we turn our pinata over then we'll be working on this side of the tube just like we did up here. So just continue on doing this probably for another five rounds and then we will be putting the actual flat part of our wings we'll cut them out and paint them and put them glue them right here okay what we have done today is we've hung our pinata up outside um, I've got an S hook here and just hung it from a tree limb I have put three rounds three layers on the pinata just because it was getting so heavy I didn't think I could go a full five so it is all ready to paint now some people will will cut their hole for their candy before they paint their pinata. I've done that before and it seems like that paint smell gets all in my pinata and it takes literally forever for it to air out. So I'm going to wait to cut my hole until after I've got it all painted. Today I've got just some regular spray paint. This is silver and we're just going to paint the pinata. Now, I would suggest not doing this when it's windy, but we never have a calm day here in Arkansas. So I'm just going to try to work with the wind and hope I've got enough paint. You know, I hope I don't lose a whole lot. So we're just going to put a thin layer of paint on it. Try to stay close enough to the pinata that you don't get a lot of uh, paint falling out into the wind, but also not too close that you get runs in your paint. And there we have it. It's all painted. Everything is covered up nicely. The paint actually lay better than I thought it would in the wind. But um, now we're going to uh, go and work on the wings, and I will show you that in just a few minutes. Okay, so for my wings, I have cut out the shape of the wings in cardboard, and then I took duct tape, just regular old silver duct tape, and I taped off the lines here to make the design of the wings, and then I put scotch tape over the duct tape. Because I don't, I want my duct tape to be showing through my, through my paint. So whenever I take off the duct, the scotch tape, then my duct tape will be there all silver and pretty. And then I took a yarn darner and I poked a hole through it up at the top and I hung, I put this bread tie in there so it will hang on my S hook so I can paint it. This is going to be kind of hard to do in the wind. But my paint that I'm using is just a normal old uh, black spray paint. Maybe. <laughs> there went the top. Let's 
see if we can get it back in there. I hope. There we go. Yep. All's well. Okay. So then you just spray paint the whole thing black. Turn it so you can see what I'm doing. Just uh, spray paint it all. Yeah, you might get some paint on your hands. That's all right. It'll wash off. You want to get a good coverage on it. I wouldn't stress a whole lot about these wings because to be quite honest they're gonna that's gonna be the first thing that falls off when the kids start swinging at it is these wings so don't stress a whole lot over them and now for the other side So now that that one is done, I'm just going to switch him and the one I've got back here. We're going to let them dry and then I'll come back and show you uh, taking off the, the tape so we can see what the finished wing looks like. Okay, so we've got all of our painting done and I wanted to show you the wings. I'm going to take these bread ties off of them. 
and then we're just going to start peeling off the scotch tape see if they did well if I can find an end to one of the tapes that is This is going to be harder than what I thought. So it seems to be doing alright, I just am having a hard time finding the ends of all of the tape. There's one side you can see we got a little bit of bleed through there, but I'm not really going to worry too much about it because like I said, these are going to be the first thing that falls off. So let's just go ahead and try to get all of our tape off the wing. There we go. There's one. Not bad. See if we can get the tape off the other. I better take that off first. Okay. Just take him off. Find an end and start peeling the tape. I think I need scissors on some of these. So now what we're going to do is we are going to hot glue these to our little pieces here that we put on. We're just going to hot glue that right on there and I'm hoping it's going to fit. may have to do something here to make that 
where it's going to be flat enough for it to fit. But we're going to see. Right now we're going to see. I'm going to put a lot of glue on here. And now, just line up your cross in the middle, into the middle of your little round piece right there. And just make sure that your wing is straight up and down. And just hold it there and wait for your glue to dry, I guess. It shouldn't take a whole long time for it to stay on there. And then I'm going to go back in and just reinforce it here on the outside as much as I can reach. said I'm not going to stress a whole lot over these wings because they are going to literally be the first thing off. So as long as I can get them just to set on there a little bit, long enough to get it hung up for the party, I'm good. Now I'm going to try to do this other one here. Try not to knock that one off while I do it. There are little pointy edges on these. Sometimes you have to break them off. Line up this little crisscross right here, right in the center of your deal, of your piece coming off the pinata. Make sure he is straight up and down and press him on. I'm going to do just like I did on the other side, and I'm going to come back in here with hot glue on the back to try to get this in there just like that now next I will show you how to do the little design on the front here okay so I've got the wings on and they're pretty secure on there so what we're going to do now is the design here in the middle and that's going to be the windows of the spacecraft. And I've made these cutouts out of cardboard. They're going to act as my stencils. I'm going to put them on there. I've marked where the, I want this one. So I'm going to put it on there. 
I'm going to trace around it with my big Sharpie. Trying to be very careful. Sometimes you might get a little hiccup there because the pinata is not completely smooth. But you can see it turned out pretty good. And then these are going to go on each edge of this middle piece. Just take your time. This is the really tedious part of a pinata is decorating it making it into what you're wanting. And sometimes it takes a little bit of creativity. There's that one. And now we'll put another one here. I'm hoping all this is going to turn out right. You're seeing it as I'm doing it. I have not done one of these before. This is being kind of hard. Sometimes you might just have to move your stencil and freehand it. Close it up like that. Like I said, I don't know that all this is going to work. It seems like I'm going to have to make this one littler in order for it to fit. Back up here and start on the top of this one. I should have made these littler. Just going to try to draw this one. So I can fit this one in down here. This is a little bit bigger than what I wanted it, but I think it's going to be okay. Now, once I get them all like that, I'm just going to take my big marker and I'm going to color them in.
like that. Okay, so I have drawn, see if you can see that, I've drawn a little half square here, right here where I'm wanting my flap for my candy. And what I'm going to do is I've got a jigsaw. I've made a hole in here with a real sharp knife. And what I'm going to do is put this jigsaw right there in that hole and cut a flap for the candy. Maybe. Let's see if I can get it down in there where it's not going to bounce and scar up my thing. And it's going to. This first one, it did nick it up a little bit, but it'll have to be all right. Since I've got that first one there going up, then I need another one now going over to put my saw in. So I've got my knife, and I'm just going to put it here on this line and hammer it down in there. Wiggle it back and forth. Pull it out and then put my saw into that one. Just like that. Now there's that one. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. into that one. There we go. And now we're going to sort of pry that up. It's going to break probably back here, but I always just do a half. So I can fit it back in there. Maybe I better go ahead and make it a whole flat. This way I'll be able to show you exactly how thick it is. right there it's it's pretty thick okay let's get you back on there so now we'll just put our candy in there and then we'll just fit our flap right back however it came out here we'll just fit it back in there there we go just like that You just have to be careful and not let it fall through. I would actually get a piece of tape. And since the tape that we used here is practically the same, here we 
go. I'm just going to put my tape on there. And that way, when it gets to the party, they can put the candy in it. And there you have it. Okay, so here is the finished product. And I am so super happy with it. I am so excited for my grandson to see it. And I really suggest that you guys make one of these. At least try it. I, I started this in, I think it was April. And it's now almost July. So, yeah, they do take a long time. But it is so worth it when you get to the birthday party and you can have more than three or four kids hit it and you see all of them having such a good time. So, just... Just try it. I think you'll like it and you'll like the outcome. So if you liked watching this and um, like watching me make it, then give me a good thumbs up and subscribe and have a good day, y'all. Bye.